Good morning guys, welcome to day three of my Dublin vlog. Today I'm going to the GPO. I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to get in. I'm probably going to cry. It's probably going to be a very emotional day. I'm like beside myself. I can't, like I feel like I can't believe that I'm getting to go in and do this. Like I've already said it on Instagram and I'm sure you're, um, you're getting the gist through my vlog list but I just love museums. I just feel so privileged that these things have been kept for us to experience later on, so yeah. In we go. Arm yourselves. Be ready to fight and die for justice for Ireland. We suffragettes want home room for Irish women as well as for Irish men. Religious intolerance is the curse of Ireland. Socialism is neither Catholic nor Protestant, Christian nor Freethinker, Buddhist, Mohammedan nor Jew. It's only human. Substituting the common name of Irishman in place of Protestant, Catholic and dissenter has always been the very essence of Irish republicanism. No! It is unionism that embodies unity and tolerance between people of all races and creeds. Irishmen, we must give up this everlasting hatred of England. We must shake hands with all the peoples of our empire and do our best for them, for ourselves, for the United Kingdom and for all His Majesty's dominion. Indeed, so why can't Ireland, an ancient nation, have the same rights of self-government as Canada or Australia say? Your unionist bigotry is paving the way for militant Republicans. He realises that the capitalist system is the most foreign thing in Ireland. And we're catching up the capitalist system. It must go. The employers cannot carry on industry to accumulate profits without the goodwill of the workers. The worker is the slave of the capitalist society. You cannot extinguish the Irish passion for freedom. If you strike us down, we will rise again and renew the fight. Join the Irish volunteers! This letter was actually written by the O'Reilly. Like, that's his handwriting. He wrote that. Like, isn't that amazing? Can you imagine what being there must have been like?
call on the world to support the sovereign Republic of Ireland. Ireland keep defending in arms. Oh damn, skipper. Irish troops have captured the city. Enemy cannot move. The country is rising. The country will rally to us when it hears of this glorious deed. Our stand will appeal to the imagination of the whole world. The gun Bob Helga, the Western Marin Lab and Shots at Liberty Hall, is still standing. She won't get past Buckbridge. These walls are four feet of solid granite. We're not frightened of a three inch pop gun. That's no three inch shell. No. They're 18 pounders. They're flying Dublin. So much of them not using artillery in their own property. This may not last as long as we calculated it. Jim, you have no business going out patrol. Far too important. It's only a matter of time before they find our range. Dr. McNeil, the whole country would have been with us. Instead, Dublin will be razed to the ground. People will blame us. People will speak hard of us, but we will be remembered. We will be blessed by unborn generations. Unborn generations, maybe. This generation will all be shot. <coughs> They may shoot the signatories in a proclamation, but they won't shoot you or those who follow us. We will have a minimum loss, which will result in a maximum gain. As long as Irish men and Irish women are ready to die, the cause of Irish freedom is safe. Ireland will be spared a lot of bad plays and poetry. Ah. I pay homage to the soldiers of Irish freedom who have written in fire and steel this glorious chapter in the history of modern Ireland. We have kept our faith with the past and we have formed a tradition for the future. The Republic will come to be. Favourite service is to rescatter Duffy, who gets up when he's too hot. Discovers his prize to come. He's furious because nobody told her. Walks into town from that answer. Logic is there first. Knocks on the door of the GPU. Gets in. Demands to see Hamilton Pierce. Gets to see him and tells him that the Southern Navy is a disaster. Oh, she's going to take forward. And the best thing to do is to let her to come home. No one would like to do with it. And she's such a lovely witness because she says, I can't remember what he said to me, but I don't think he tried to justify himself. But as the writing went on, day after day, there was a growing appreciation that it's not going to be yet another for us. Why did you want that? 1848, 1867. The rebels are putting up a good show. And one particularly vivid eyewitness account by James Lee Hopkins in his book The Insurrection of Dublin illustrates day by day the changing public opinion, the way in which very many uh, Dubliners took the view, well, they're putting on a great fight. Uh, are, 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 are they doing well? And some of those who were appalled on Easter Monday had come around to changing their mind by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. How was the British court? How was the British court? This is where I suppose you could say that politics is effectively suspended. A civilian approach. Well, the British government is suspended. Ireland is placed under martial law. General John Maxwell comes in, comes late during the Easter Rising. His mission is to suppress the rise of How do you do that? Whatever happens, suspects. How do you define suspects? Well, in a very hack-handed manner. Was the answer. There were members of the Irish Parliamentary Party who could see that this had the potential to do profound damage. And you can see even in the House of Commons, senior 
Irish nationalist politicians like John Dillon are saying, don't do this. You're going to wash away our whole life's work in a sea of blood. And John Dillon knew more than many in the party because he was in Dublin at the time, the time of the 1960s. He was perhaps more familiar with what was going on and what was underpinning and how if it was handled badly at the time in Ireland would be the aftermath, how it might be seen. through my mask because like I look like I'm like look at this liquid lipstick was not mask proof it's the Too Faced lady bottles so um yeah look at that mascara though that's that hourglass mascara loving that anyway the GPO was amazing cried yeah I was going to but definitely did but like people told me or I see people told me my research indicated like that an hour was about the kind of average time and I was like right I know that I spent more than the average time but I booked the epic museum so that's where we're walking to now and I booked that for half two so I went into the GPO at half ten and I only left at two because I had to to walk here I feel like I kind of rushed the end of it I could I could go back tomorrow it was so so good and as well as the actual exhibition being good I got a Margaret Skinner keyring in the gift shop and I nearly cried then too because you never get Margaret so Margaret because I'm sure most of you will not know because she gets no credit was as as do most of the women who were part of the rising and and the um the Republic of Ireland itself um, women really don't get enough credit in all history, but particularly with reference to this. So Margaret came from Coatbridge, which is a place in North Lanarkshire, just outside Glasgow. She came over, she joined the Rising, she was wounded, but she survived. Um, you know, she went to jail, she went on to join the anti-treaty side of things. I just love her. So yeah. I got a Margaret Skinner keyring, which I was not expecting in my wildest dreams to get. And I also got a Dr. Lang keyring, and I'm just so thrilled. I'm really sorry. I feel like you're supposed to watch this channel for me to be like, here's some lipstick, and here's me not buying stuff, and here's me thinking about getting use and project planning and whatever, and you're just getting my like these historical figures that I geek out about. Um, but you know. Everglass Extreme Caution Mascara, there's a, a makeup recommendation for you. Um, but anyway, I can see a ship coming up ahead of me. Yes, I am in the right place. So I was going to say there, like, I see a ship coming up ahead of me and I presume that's the Jeannie Johnson. That is linked to the Epic Museum, but it's you pay separately for it. It's actually not open today. I think it's only open at weekends at the moment because obviously this is December, so it's, it's not really the season. But... Yes, this is what we're doing this afternoon, the Emigration Museum. Let's head in.
whaling ship provided my escape, and I made my way across the globe to America. America, reporting for a Catholic paper, the Boston Pilot, and writing lots of poetry. I hope to publish a collection, Songs from the Southern Seas.
my friend, you find me in the last lap of a race I'd long forgotten to run. A metaphor. <laughs> And also the little archway, little archway, the big archway that I showed you earlier from across the road because it's dark now, it's got projections on it and look how pretty it is. They seem to have a lot of projections on different buildings. I did see they did that last year, I didn't know if they were going to do it again this year or not. Um, but it's really, really pretty. Really, ugh, I want to live here. Oh look, that person's got lights around their door. Wild. I had to come straight, I didn't have time to go home and change and this really wasn't the vibe guys but we're here now um, but I am very excited to try orange wine, the key component of why I'm here. So I have come to the fancy restaurant and ordered a burger but my grand's got the turkey and that was what I was going to order but I think I'm going to have turkey at the winding stair tomorrow. My grand's got a tiger prawn curry thing. So yeah, I do have the order of a five year old but I'm very excited about it. With my dessert I'm going slightly more Christmassy themed. They do have actual Christmas pudding but that's not what I'm having. I'm going to have the Bramley apple and cranberry crumble pie which is like a nod to being Christmassy but it's not full on Christmas pudding because I actually don't really care for Christmas pudding. Shameful secret given I am such a Christmas enthusiast. They're obviously doing these light projections. Um, so yeah, the GPO has got it as well. So it's like a Christmas jumper, kind of knit pattern on the main bit, and then there's like sort of falling stars skating from the top. 